We are now three weeks into the new year. Many of you are three weeks into your carnivore journey for the first time. And all too many of you decided to have a cheat day, or what probably started as a cheat day, at Christmas, which then lasted probably for a week or two. Many such cases, as the man said. And now you're wondering why this far into either reclaiming your carnivore journey or starting a brand new, never done it before carnivore life, why you're having a rough time. So we're going to today talk about what you're probably experiencing, which is withdrawal symptoms of sugar. Because sugar is addicting. We know this. We know that sugar gets its hooks into you and that you once it's bad, you don't notice it until you take it away. And then it becomes like a constant noise in your life. It takes a long time to go away. And they can have a lot of weird side effects. Let's talk a little bit about some of these side effects. And I'm not going to talk to you about a lot of these side effects in depth because some of them you can make entire videos on. You would probably want for some of these to go talk to a mental health professional to give you an idea of where we're going. Probably shouldn't take mental health advice in any real way from YouTube. Go see a professional if you're dealing with some of these in a very serious way that might be of any danger to yourself. So the first of these are anxiety. You're experiencing sudden anxiety and you don't have a habit of anxiety. It could very well be the case that you're experiencing sugar withdrawal symptoms. Anxiety is a very common uh, withdrawal symptom when you have eliminated sugars from your diet. If you're not used to having anxiety, this might be a sign that you were rather severely hooked on sugar more so than you thought. Or even worse, when you indulged at Christmas, if you had been keto or carnivore beforehand, you made things a lot worse for yourself if you're suddenly having anxiety when you don't normally experience it. Second one of these, which may be linked to the first, changes in sleep patterns. Are you going to bed earlier? Later? Are you having a hard time sleeping when you normally don't? These might be a side effect, consequence of sugar withdrawal. You should probably look for some non-prescription remedy for taking care of this if you're having trouble sleeping. A uh, supplement that often is wor works for many people is ZMA. It's a zinc, magnesium, and I can never remember the A. I'll put a bottle of it up on the screen here. I've used this in the past when I've had issues sleeping. It works. I'm not recommending supplements on a carnivore diet as a permanent thing unless you've got a good reason for it. I think losing sleep because of sugar withdrawals is actually a pretty good reason, but you're free to disagree with me if you want. The third sign of a sugar withdrawal, depression. Are you, are you in a depressed mood? Are you just feeling down and you don't, don't normally? A long time ago, I fell off the wagon on keto and I didn't understand why, after I had reasserted things, why I was depressed with sugar withdrawal. It's a serious one. Depression is nothing to, to play around with. So if you're experiencing this, you may want to go see what you need to do to take care of this problem before, if, especially if it starts becoming something dangerous in your life. If not, just white knuckle through it. That's what I did. It worked for me. You may have, you may need other help though. But number four, difficulty concentrating. When you go to do your job at work, especially if it's like anything concentration based, you know, data entry or, analytic work, anything like that? Are you having a hard time staying focused? Are you having a hard time staying focused when reading a book? Maybe if you play golf, you're having a hard time staying focused when you're playing golf. Any, anything that you have to do that requires concentration and focus is becoming difficult. You cut out the carbs recently, this may be why. Dizziness or lightheadedness is the next one. I don't even know how to describe this one really, but... Um, if you've been at the gym and you're having a hard time with balance, if you you know get up from seated and oh you, you're wobbling when you didn't before, this might be an extreme side effect of a sh sugar withdrawal problem that you're going through. This, like all the others, will eventually pass. Um, in these situations, take more care, obviously, in things that you're doing. The next one, fatigue. You're just running out of energy. Got no energy at all. 
if you still drink coffee or tea, you're suddenly having a second cup or a third cup just to get through your day. Sugar withdrawal. And why is that? Well, you're probably not fat adapted yet, right? So your body is used to sugar as its main source of energy. So what happens? Well, it takes weeks and weeks to get adapted to fat. Fat adaptation for the first time takes a long time. If you fall off the wagon, it doesn't take nearly as long for your body to get fat adapted again if you, if you had been fat adapted for a while. Fatigue is a sure sign that you are having sugar withdrawals. The next one's an obvious one. You're having intense cravings for something sweet. That one's obvious. I don't think we need to spend much time on it. You know, you can't get donuts out of your head or whatever. And you just want a donut or you want, a, you want some ice cream or a candy bar, whatever it is. Obviously, that's a problem. The weird one to me is intense cravings for other carbohydrates like chips or pasta. And I'll use an example from past life for me. When I went keto for, I think, the first time that I went really, like, you know, bad standard American diet to clean keto without a transition period, I mean, the keto flu was rough enough by itself, but three weeks or so into it, I started seeing foods on TV that if they were on a menu at a restaurant, I would have picked any five things before I would have picked that on the menu, right? And I saw that item on TV and I was like, man, that looks good. You ever had that happen? I had it once years ago where, you know, I was never a deli sandwich guy, but I, man, that deli sandwich shop that I was passing to go to class looked really good. If you're having intense cravings for carbohydrates, chips, pasta, that kind of thing, and it's not sugar, it's still sugar withdrawal. Carbs turn to sugar in your body. This is why, you know, the whole slow carb, fast carb thing is nonsense. But they turn to sugar. And a big red flag for you on this is if it's something you normally might not want, suddenly sounds really good. I mean, if you're not a fan of Chinese food, but sweet and sour chicken sounds amazing to you, you're probably going through sugar withdrawals. The next one, irritability. You have a short fuse now? Didn't used to before. Does it, take, it doesn't take much to set you off. Find yourself having to leave your room, do not explode on your kids. Probably sugar withdrawals. Sugar changes your mood. It's almost like psychotropic that way. It alters your mood, your perception of things. It also alters your thinking. And you, you pull that chemical out of your life, and what happens? You're having trouble because you were addicted to sugar. And I said that wrong. You are addicted to sugar. And Dr. Siwes calls himself the carb-addicted doc. Man doesn't eat carbs. Still calls himself that. These would be something you'll need to be cognizant of for the rest of your life. This is why I caution against cheat days because you can have a cheat day that turns into cheat weeks and then you have these symptoms for a long time afterwards. The final one is nausea. I think that's self-explanatory. Especially if you don't have a history of it, you're not pregnant or something, you don't have a good reason to be, having, be nauseous, good sign that you are dealing with sugar addiction withdrawals. Now, how do you deal with this stuff? First, first guideline here. If you've been looking at the carnivore community and you see, you know, you know, like I talk about how I have to track macros and restrict to lose body fat, or you see steak and butter gal talk about the priming system that she sometimes promotes, or you see other people talking about their slightly different way of doing carnivore for weight loss or picking up intermittent fasting, don't do any of that at the beginning. If you're going through this stuff, don't do any of it. Keep it simple. Just be a clean carnivore. Get all the junk out. Like one of the ways that will get you through this faster is not to eat dairy because dairy has carbs in it. Trace sugars, galactose, lactose, other things. So avoid that stuff. You'll be fine. You'll get through it, but it can take weeks. And if you start getting these weird, like persistent hunger pangs where you're like, let's say you go to Sam's Club or Walmart and you buy they go three and a half pound tomahawk ribeye and you cook that thing perfectly. You eat it in one sitting, you're stuffed. And an hour and a half long, later, you're hungry when you shouldn't have been hungry till the next day. But logically, you shouldn't have been, but you are. That's probably a sign that your body's asking you for carbohydrates. What do you do in that situation? Go munch on some butter. It's either consume more fat or consume more protein. Take your pick but have some more of that. Basically, eat more meat. It'll pass. How long do you need to do this for? Before the, Do it as long as it takes for the sugar cravings to go away. And I don't mean like 
you, you look at something and you go, man, it'd be nice if I could have that. I mean, like, there's a slight temptation, okay? There get, you know, eventually you'll probably reach the point where I did, where foods that I used to like, if I saw them, I, I, at most I think, you know, I remember liking that. And then it being nothing more than that. But that's what you need to do. Don't do anything weird initially. Just get carnivore, get fat adapted, wait for the cravings to pass. Because they will. But it can take weeks for it to happen. Sugar is pernicious. Sugar is, has this really almost diabolical effect on the body. Your body loves the stuff. It absolutely loves it. You know how I know this? Because if you don't believe me, all you have to do is give yourself some sugar and you'll see what happens. It ain't good, folks. It ain't good at all. Let me know if you found this helpful. Or if you did, find, send this to someone who you know might be going through sugar withdrawal. You know, if you've got that friend of yours who doesn't watch these kind of videos typically but is trying the carnivore diet because you talked them into it, send this to them if they're having trouble. I once, looking at this list, personally could click like five of these. Yeah. Sugar addiction's rough, folks. Take it seriously. Be there for your friends if they're going through it. Let me know if this helped you in the comments, please. Like and subscribe if you haven't. It does help. As does sharing this on social media. That helps a lot, too. I'm Anthony Stein, the Practical Carnivore. Thanks for tuning in today.